Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 560. I have the white pieces and played e4. My opponent goes c5, so we get a Sicilian defense. Play normal moves, knight f3, plays knight c6, one of the top choices there, and I go d4, heading for the open Sicilian. And right here he plays a very unusual move, uh, e6. Normally the exchange occurs there. Uh, you can see it's a huge favorite, right? It's 6,000 to 2 <laughs> that uh, black will take that pawn. But um, this is uh, a move. And um, it's interesting that the chess engine really wants to push on. So maybe that's why uh, this isn't played so much by uh, good players. Um, and it looks like d5 is, is the best reply here. But it, it is, uh, this is an interesting point to try and uh, figure out what's going on. Uh, if you push ahead, let's take a look at this first. Um, he can move the knight immediately, or he can exchange and move the knight. I thought he would probably take first and then then move the knight. And um, I guess the problem is there's no no great square for the knight. Now he can throw in queen e7 check, having opened that up a little bit. But uh, the engine wants to go knight to d4, and after this exchange, um, that's actually just giving up a pawn. <laughs> so uh, so I doubt that uh, Black would really play that way. And but if he's not going there, where is he going? Uh, the other choice might be knight a5. But uh, then the knight's stuck out there. Doesn't seem to have any obvious plan. The bishop is uh, controlling that square. Maybe knight a5 combined with pawn to c4 is an idea. But uh, all in all, this looks like a, a really good position for uh, white. So if you ever confronted with this, that's the uh, that seems to be the move here. Just pushing on with d5 and kicking that knight to a, an awkward square. And white will have a lot of space and better pieces. Um, yeah, so I didn't see that during the game. Um, but the, it does raise a question of uh, what to do about this. Of course, you don't have to do anything at all. You can just uh, sit there because it's adequately defended. And you sort of want him to take anyway. So you might try and encourage um, encourage him to take the pawn by playing a developing move like bishop e3. That's That's pretty logical. Or knight c3. And then that would bring you back into open Sicilian, typical open Sicilian lines. Or you could play the move that uh, I played, which is c3. And the idea here is not not so much to support the pawn, but as to, uh, but in order to be prepared to take back with the pawn and maintain this uh, duo of pawns in the center that control a lot of squares. So that's that's what I was doing there, and it's a reasonable plan. But just d5 was a lot better. Anyway, he goes queen c7. We're out of the opening book here. And I go bishop d3. So now I'm just developing my pieces and kind of waiting for him to take. At some point, uh, he'll either have to defend this pawn or uh, or do that exchange. He decides to exchange here. And um, we get a pretty comfortable position for white now that I have this uh, extra extra space. So um, And he makes a mistake here with g6. It's just as creating lots of weaknesses on the dark squares. And this uh, causes problems throughout throughout the game for him. Um, I just castled here, and he goes bishop g7. And now I make a slight mistake. I, I was a little too quick here to push on with uh, e5. Sort of freezes the structure in the center. You know, I was trying to create a permanent weakness here on d6. But with good play, he could actually dissolve that. So um, the best way to play here is either to maintain the center, not moving those pawns at all, or if I am going to move a pawn, push on with d5 once again with the idea of kicking this knight around. But, uh, you know, I haven't even completed my development, so just maintaining those pawns in the center, which are not under any particular threat, and just uh, getting my pieces out would probably be the best way to go here. Yeah, you see knight c3 is one of the top choices. Bishop g5 also a move. Uh, okay, so I played e5, and, uh, well, this keeps an edge, but um, maybe not the most accurate way to play. He goes knight g e7. He wants to keep this diagonal clear for his bishop. Bishop e3, he castles, and knight bd2, so, um, oh, he goes, yeah, it's my turn, I go knight bd2. Knight to c3 would have been better in this position. Uh, the, the knight on c3 is just a little more active, it's looking on two squares in the center instead of just one, and, uh, you know, I had the idea of developing the knight to d4 anyway, but, um, e4, the knight's heading for e4, but from c3 it's just uh, more actively post posted. Uh, so not the best move. He goes knight d5, and I go knight e4. Um, you know, oh, I skipped over one point I wanted to mention. Right at the point when I played e5, 
Yeah, right here, right after e5. Uh, he didn't really take advantage of it, but the, the problem with this uh, e5 move is that he can play uh, d5 here. So I'm not really clamping down on those uh, dark squares the way I wanted to. So I think um, uh, <clears throat> Black's mistake here was not in not challenging my setup here. He lets me uh, control these dark squares and it comes back to cause problems later. Uh, knight bd2, yes, yeah, so we got up to this point. He brings his knight forward to d5, and I bring my knight to e4. And I wasn't too worried about him taking off this bishop. Part of the point of these, uh, of advancing the pawns like this, is it makes his bishop kind of a, a bad piece. And so um, I'm not so worried if I leave, lose this bishop, but I don't need it anymore to challenge his dark squared bishop. So he decides to take it off. That uh, brings another pawn into the center. I have a pretty solid structure here. And he goes f5. And this is another uh, interesting uh, turning point in the game. I have basically two moves to consider here. One is knight d6, which was uh, kind of a follow-up on my previous strategy, and so in a way the more logical way to play. But um, the move e takes f6, opening up the king side while this bishop is uh, still in prison behind these uh, wall of light squared pawns is actually the, the better move here. Um, it's just uh, going for a direct attack on the king side. After I take here, um, it's dangerous actually for him to take the pawn back. I didn't see this at all. But the top choice here and the way for, uh, way for uh, white to continue to play actually is to play bishop h6 and just uh, let that pawn live for a while. Maybe he can try and round it up later and uh, try and get some counter pressure on my position and hopefully buy some time to get his pieces into the game. This uh, bishop, in addition to being stuck back here behind the wall of pawns, it's also keeping this rook trapped. So just a simple um, exchange here leads to a, a pretty dangerous attack. This knight hops into g5, and, uh, and now there's a threat to just take the bishop. The bishop can either move or, uh, or it can be defended with queen d8. Let's see, but if he takes, say for example, it's one way to deal with that threat, then um, actually the engine says better to take here first. Get off the rooks. King takes back, then grab the bishop. And now you can start to see the danger. It becomes apparent this king is like isolated here. There's an open file and all my pieces are ready to jump in. The queen can come here, the rook can come here, the bishop and knight. The knight is already nearby and the bishop is already well posted and uh, his pieces are all over here. So, uh, um, you know, black is just not going to survive this attack. Kind of amazing. And let's see, the other way of playing it would be to play queen d8 to defend the bishop and at least, uh, um, queen d8 rather, to defend the bishop and at least bring another piece in. Let's see, I can take, queen takes, not, not, queen can't take, sorry. <clears throat> it has to be rook takes because I've got a rook looking at it and then um, queen to g4. So if he trades rooks, it'll, I'll bring another rook into the attack. And once again, I just have this overwhelming majority of force around his king. His bishop can't get into the game and his rook can't get into the game. So uh, I should be able to just <laughs> win this just through superior force around his king. So all of that comes from this uh, he takes uh, f6 on passant move. And uh, I, I should have been able to pick up on that. You can see already the seeds of uh, his problem are set here, and it's uh, dangerous for him to open up the position before he's been developed. So, classic uh, example of that, uh, <coughs> or an example of that classic rule that uh, you don't want to open the position up until your pieces are are, are developed. Uh, anyway, I went for the uh, the other continuation. I went knight d6 here, which is also good. You know, it, it ensures this pawn stays backwards and uh, leaves. Uh, black with some long-term difficulties. Okay, he played queen d8. I go rook c1. So, but there's no direct attack here. It's just a kind of a long-term edge and, and the game continues for quite a while here. He gets active with his knight. I drop my bishop back to b1. I didn't want to give it up. Goes knight to d5. Gets a good post for that. Queen d2. b6. Now he's finally getting his bishop into the game. So that's a... Um, <clears throat> problem with the slow approach is it gave him time to uh, to get all his pieces out. I mean, I'm going to keep this edge because it's kind of a, a permanent uh, annoyance to have this knight here on d6. 
but uh, he is going to have time to get his pieces out and then anything can happen. <laughs> so uh, let's say I go with b4 here and he plays uh, f4 trying to undermine my center pawns. Uh, once again, opening things up, he's still not really ready. Uh, this bishop is still not, uh, has not been developed and the rook is not yet able to come into the game. So uh, that's just a bit premature once again to be pushing this pawn forward. And this time I do take, I really don't have much choice here. And he takes back and then I come forward with the bishop to e4. So I'm getting all my pieces into the game and uh, notice that uh, Black can't block with his bishop. I've got the knight controlling that square, and so he's got to move the rook. Uh, rook to b8. And now rook to c2. I was preparing to double on the c file. Bishop to h6. He starts to set up some threats against my queen here. So I move my queen over to f2. So I've got um, ideas uh, along the um, f file as well as the c file if, uh, if I can <coughs> clear this with tempo. Um, but, of course, he's got his rook against my queen, so I have to be careful how I do this. He plays g5 to support his knight, and uh, so I, I think that the f file is pretty solidly blocked, and I, I switch my attention to the c file. And now he plays uh, g4. So this is where the, the tactics finally hit. Uh, you know, there's all this buildup, and then, then it explodes. There's already a threat in this position. I'm basically threatening to take his uh, bishop. Um, it looks protected at first glance, I guess, but the problem is one of the protectors is the queen, and uh, that's uh, too high value to piece to give up. So just rook takes bishop, rook takes, rook takes bishop, and I'm a piece up, and if he takes with the queen, then I'll stay up material. And if he moves the queen away, then I'll, I'll grab this rook with check, and I'll stay up a piece. So he's got to deal with that threat. And uh, so the engine is recommending bishop a6. And then, once again, we'll be in this position where I have some slight uh, positional edge, but uh, the game would continue. Uh, instead, he tried counterattacking with g4. Sometimes this works. You know, you meet in a threat. Your opponent makes a threat. You meet it with a threat on one of his pieces. But the thing is, I don't have to uh, respond to this threat right away because my threat of taking his queen is bigger. So I can just proceed with uh, rook takes c8. Rook takes. Rook takes. And now um, he decides to give up the queen. If he moves the queen away, I can take the rook with check, and then I have time to save my knight. You know, there's only one square for the queen anyway. The queen would have to go to e7. So rook takes, rook check, king or queen takes, or bishop takes, whatever. And then I have time to save the knight, and I stay a piece up. So he decides to give up the queen for rook plus knight. But the problem is um, it's now I've got a queen versus a rook. And so this is pretty simply winning. Although uh, I do have to be a little careful, right? He's got threats coming in here to the back rank, and uh, and my knight is still under attack. Um, so it's interesting that uh, I did manage to find the best move here, which is queen h4, just staying on the attack. You have to calculate this pretty precisely because with the rook and the knight and the pawn nearby, sometimes there there are little tricks that uh, will turn the tide of the game. But in this case, uh, I have threats. Um, against his loose bishop and the uh, pawn behind it, and this will result in a mating attack here, so he can't really uh, defend against this. Uh, he tries rook c1, and this, this I'd calculated, king f2, and then uh, he can take the knight here. If there's more checks, then I can uh, just move my king up to uh, g3, and it's pretty safe there. So he takes the knight, and now he's... Uh, threatening to take here an even queen if I'm not careful. So, you know, maybe I should just grab this pawn. Now, that's what I did. <laughs> the chess engine says I can actually afford to take on h6. That's uh, At this point, I, I played it safe by grabbing that pawn and, and preventing some of these uh, counterplay ideas that uh, black has. But the quickest win is to actually take the bishop and let that happen. So I'm just curious. So suppose I took here, and uh, he takes here. Then bishop takes h7 check, just continuing to ignore this, even though he can queen with check <laughs> on the next move. Um, and I can't, I mean, the, the pawn is defended by the knight, so I've got to, uh, I've got to be very precise here. But uh, queen takes f4 check, okay. The knight goes with check, and I can round up the pawn, and then it's all over. So that's, that's deep enough to see that's winning. Okay, so that's only a couple moves. I, I, should, I should have been able to calculate that. But, uh, well, this seemed like a simply winning continuation as well. I just take that pawn, 
and um, you know my, I keep on with the attack. He tried uh, rook back to d1 to defend. Oh, rook over to d1 to attack. And um, let's see, I go queen takes h6, picking up the bishop. Went rook d2 check. Yeah, he was wanted to deliver this check on the second rank, and my bishop was covering the c2 square. So he did that little bit over to be able to deliver this check. But now my king goes here attacking his rook, and um, after he gives one more check, um, he just runs out of uh, <coughs> runs out of checks at this point. And uh, let's see, there's no mate here, but uh, I'm just up material, and, and pieces are hanging. The knight's hanging. The rook is under attack, and this pawn goes with check. So he resigned at this point. But uh, anyway, I thought that was an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.